The Pearl Mimic Pro sounds more like an acoustic kit, but the Roland TD50X feels more like one because of positional sensing. This is one of the most prevalent points in discussions that comes up when people are trying to decide between a higher end Roland module or a Pearl Mimic Pro. The Pearl Mimic Pro cannot do positional sensing, but Roland modules can. And this is a fact, but what if we could just make the Pearl Mimic Pro have positional sensing? force it to do something that it's not supposed to do. I'm Luke, this is the eDrum Workshop, and today I'm going to show you how it can be achieved, but we do need additional tools. First up, if you're not quite sure what positional sensing is or why you might want it, here's a quick rundown. Taking it in its most basic form on a snare drum, this gives you different sounds across the head as you move from playing in the centre towards the edge of the drum. It can also be used on the rims to differentiate between a shallow and a deep rim shot. Generally speaking, it needs a centre mount trigger, except for the Roland Digital Snare which uses multiple sensors. And the idea is that it gives you more articulations so that the experience becomes a lot closer to that of an acoustic drum. Here's an example of what it sounds like on the Roland TD50X. If you're running a VST that supports positional sensing then there might be even more variations in the samples which makes it feel even more realistic. The Pearl Mimic Pro module does not support this feature, it was a Roland patented feature for quite a long time. Roland modules output the positional information on a control change or CC number, on a snare drum that's CC number 16, and this is what a VST utilises to support the function. I made a big MIDI video a while back that goes into this in more detail if you want more information. Information. So the Mimic Pro doesn't support positional sensing natively with its own trigger engine and it also doesn't do anything with these CC values when they come in over MIDI. However, the Mimic does have samples taken from the edge of the snare head in its sound library. There's a feature that gets overlooked quite a lot on the Mimic, the Kit Instrument Assign, where you can select between various articulations, including side for head edge samples and rim shot side for shallow rim shot samples. I often use these samples as layers when building different snare sounds because it's a great way of adding extra tone to the snare. But it's also the access to these samples that's going to allow me to force positional sensing support along with a couple of other important elements. The first of these is an additional piece of hardware, the AudioFront eDrum In 10. I did a really in-depth review of this trigger interface a while ago, so I won't be going into detail on this brilliant device in this particular video. The important thing of note is that the eDrum In 10 supports positional sensing on centre mount triggers, and it also gives us access to another key part of the puzzle, the ability to send positional information as a distinct MIDI note rather than as a CC value. You. Using this feature, once I go past a certain point on the position monitor here, the MIDI note that's sent out for that pad swaps to another one. Now I can send out two different MIDI notes for, say, a snare drum, depending on the area of the head that I'm hitting. The idea here being that instead of plugging the snare into the Mimic Pro's trigger input, I'll have it plugged into the eDrum in 10, and I'll send the MIDI information into the Pearl Mimic Pro. This way I can still trigger the sounds from the Mimic. The final part of the equation is how to utilise this information. There are a couple of ways but I'll start with the most basic for a single snare sound and then we'll explore some others. When you hook up any trigger pad to the Mimic, the amount of articulations available will depend on the kind of trigger that you've plugged in. So if you've got a dual zone pad, there's usually three articulations available, head, rim and rim shot. But we need at least one additional articulation now because we want to use the side samples alongside the centre head samples. So to get around this, there is actually a pad type on the Mimic that gives you access to five different articulations. Under the VPAD category, you've got the MIDI pad five zones pad type. 
This gives you five zones worth of articulations and you can set up individual MIDI notes for each one. Bingo. I'll leave the snare head, rim and rim shot articulations as their default settings. I've already matched these up in the eDrumming software, but now I can add a fourth articulation for the side head samples with the same MIDI note that I've set up for the position note on the eDrumming software. And with that, I've created positional variations on the snare head. There are a few limitations as there usually are when you force something to do something that it's not designed to do. The most obvious being that there's only two positional variations available. You've got one for the center and you've got one for the head. There's no transitions between the two and there's no kind of blending. This is just two distinct MIDI notes triggering different sets of samples. And unfortunately, even if the e drumming did support various MIDI zones for the head, there aren't any samples in the Mimic to utilize that many variations. It does take a bit of balancing to get the position change point on the head to feel natural. Fortunately, the e drumming does give you quite a bit of control over this. However, one way to help mitigate this is by creative use of the sample layering. Because you can set up all of the layers for each zone individually, I've had really good results layering the side articulation over the center to one for the center zone and then just having the side articulation play as you get towards the edge. This helps kind of paper over the cracks in the transition a bit by keeping the overtones the same. Depending on what instruments you're layering and the differences between the center and the side samples, there is a chance that you'll run into weird phasing issues if you're using the samples from the same snare or if you're using layers from different snares you just have to watch out for differences in tuning. There's also no way of sending out distinct MIDI notes for deep and shallow rim shots on the eDrumming software as far as I know. This is a little bit of a shame and I'm hoping that at some point this will be a feature on the eDrumming software because obviously there's that fifth zone on the Mimics VPad settings that's just ripe for this use. The final major limitation of this is that it only works for snare drums in terms of the onboard samples. Unfortunately there aren't any different position samples for toms or different areas of cymbals but there are possible workarounds with different ways to utilize this forced feature. You can send the edge MIDI notes to a completely different instrument from a different pad slot. So you could set up a different snare on an auxiliary pad input or one of the eight available MIDI only inputs and use the MIDI note for that pad as the edge zone. This way you could go more subtle with it and just have slightly different processing between the center and the edge samples. or you could have wildly different sounds for each zone. This is how you could potentially get around the positional sensing on the toms. For example, you could have a second tom sound assigned to a different instrument slot and EQ and tune it slightly differently to get a different variation. And you're not limited to one pad for this because the eDrum in can support this on all of its inputs. And of course, this is all just being carried over one MIDI cable. There are also some other great MIDI tricks that you could use with an eDrum in and a Pearl Mimic Pro. For example, you could have extra layered instruments with creative MIDI routing. What do you think about this cool workaround? Is it something you'd want to do? It does kind of make me clamor for native support or positional sensing because I think it sounds really good. But I don't know if that would ever happen. So for now, this workaround is a really fun way of making the Mimic Pro have positional sensing. And the e -drum in makes a really good companion to most drum modules. Speaking of great companions, if you want any new kits for your Pearl Mimic Pro, go check out my store at theedrumworkshop.com. I also have kits for Roland modules and samples that will work with quite a few different modules. But above all, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!